a kind of a response video that uh, pizza boy 180 guy don't really like him much so I did a response video to um, the other video on economics so I'm gonna drag this out um, just because his video really it's it's just such a perfect example of the cheap um, straw man you know I mean just so paper thin veneer of argument I mean it's all show no substance so let's go I still see a lot of Marxism neo-Marxism cultural Marxism permeating the media politics my college so I want to address Marxism or neo-Marxism or cultural Marxism you know it would be really cool if you actually connected a policy initiative with a Marxist quote I mean, if you actually took, like, something one of these Marxists is advocating, some social policy they're advocating, and took a Marxist quote and showed how the two are identical, how they're reading Karl Marx and imposing it on the world, that would be really interesting. What there's a lot of is Adam Smith moronica, you know, that comes out of your kind of person's mouth. The stupid, like, money, like, wealth creates jobs kind of nonsense. <laughs> Now, I've been well-versed in what Marxism or neo-Marxism or cultural Marxism is because I've been to college. <laughs> yeah, so you're just going to gonna, you keep using the jargon because that's to your advantage, right? It's just to label them something. So that's your basically your N, your secret little bomb N-word is you'll just use this maligning rhetoric. It's Marxism. It's communism because it's not... Um, moronic selfishism and glorification of inheritance and birthright that somehow if it's not that it's got to be commies <laughs> no no it'll be nice why don't you call them progressives that's what probably what they call themselves is progressive thinkers progressive philosophy thinking beyond being animals and assholes you're taking classes and you can't escape it it's everywhere all over academia and the university. Just about every class I've had labors under the, some kind of Marxist paradigm. It, they're really attached to it. In fact, a lot of these professors are atheist or agnostic. At least they... <laughs> yeah, and so they, what's wrong with that? You're saying now that Darwin uh, is, is a communist? Uh, you know, come on. Where, where are you going with this crap? Um, yeah, they're smart. They're intellectuals. They have a brain. I mean, atheism is just common frickin' sense in the 20th century. We're no longer um, stupid enough to believe in Thor and Zeus, you know, so we don't fall for that nonsense. And we don't fall for the nonsense that we're just, we can't help being selfish, uh, bigoted morons. We can't, we can't overcome our nature. That's not what the brain can do. We don't have 10,000 years of civilization and and working to understand the world to become civilized no that's not the objective civilization no the objective is just to make bigger clubs to smash the niggers with <laughs> you stupid fucktard I think they are but they really revere Marx as their Jesus as their savior and uh, yeah well why don't you show one of these Marx why don't you show them for what they are why don't you show them quoting Marx why don't you do that Okay, people quote the Bible all the time. It's like, you know, they put 316 on signs and wave them all around, all, all you Christian types. Uh, so why don't, you, why don't you show us some of these, these devotees to Marxism who are taking it verse by verse, word for word, right out of the Marxist agenda. Okay, the agenda that doesn't exist. I mean, Marx didn't really have an agenda, pizza head. And it's clever, you know. Uh, there's a lot of similarities. Just like a religious figure like Jesus promised a, a utopian, better world in the future, so did Marx. Marx promises this egalitarian, equal, utopian world in the future. <laughs> no, what Marx did was spell out the end game. And what he pointed out, which is going to happen very soon in this very economy that you glorify, is that it's going to crash. It's going to eat itself. Okay, and that's what he pointed out. He didn't promise anything. He just pointed out the realistic fact that workers produce value and that the rich don't really, aren't really necessary. They don't do much. They're not functional participants in society. Sure. There's sort of a second coming of Christ parallel there.
just like Jesus or other religious figures are, are, are sent out to save humanity. Oh, look, you know, what a silly game you're playing. Everybody could do the same exact thing. We just Adam Smith you to pieces. Oh, Adam, you have this god of Adam, or Ayn, Ayn Rand. How would you like that? I'll just call you a Randyite. Okay, I'll just say you're suckling the breast of the Randian bitch monster. Okay, I mean, then that's going to be valid rhetoric. I'll just call every single one of you capitalist morons a Randyite. <laughs> you know, there, okay? So that's, that's how we'll do the tit-for-tat thing. All right, the little cheap moronic rhetoric. Come on, come up with a real argument. So is Karl Marx. So to, to a lot of these professors, to a lot of the, these people in the media, to a lot of liberal Democrats... Karl Marx is... Oh, yeah, the media owned by the richest people in the world. Right, that horrible commie media. <laughs> you know, we see, they're not, they're not even, they, they, they can't even spell out what's wrong with our society and our culture and the rest of it. They get it all wrong. They glorify the crap that you fucking idolize. Okay, they're the Randians. A religious figure, a humanity-saving figure. In fact, I say Marxism is the opiate of the left. Uh, yeah, whatever. And Randyism is the um, lead paint of the right, okay? Because you all are retarded. I mean, get to get to an actual argument, okay? An actual structural argument about how somehow, you know, things like health care, uh, things like human dignity... Uh, and respecting real work, not just exploiting deprivation, how ideas like that are a flawed. Why don't you explain how the ideas are flawed? The problem with Marx and ideas based on Marx is he was wrong on human nature. He got human nature wrong. <sighs> Says Pizza Head. <laughs> yeah, okay, let's hear, let's, let's hear the explanation. In practice, Marxism turned out to be one of the most evil, oppressive systems ever put in place by human beings. And and it was never put in practice. So this is this is just going to be your complete straw man argument. You even go to Nazi Germany and calling that Marxism. I mean, that's just so silly. Okay, and under and the Soviet Union was hardly anything close to Marxism. It was completely party controlled. There was no fucking egalitarian um, equality in the society whatsoever. All right, if you weren't part of the if you weren't part of the party, you were you were not you didn't have any social mobility. Whether we're talking about communist China, the USSR, Soviet Union. Just, yeah, communist China, where there's billionaires right now driving down the roads in Mercedes Benzes. Communist China. Yeah, sure. That's Marxism. And communist China is the blueprint of Marxism. Yeah, come on. Socialism of Adolf Hitler, Mussolini, Paul Pot. We could go. On. Yeah, why don't you go on and on about Europe? I mean, there's lots of civilized countries in Europe that you probably are going to call socialist, right? Probably all of Europe you're going to call socialist. So why don't you use those as an example? On and on. It's been an extremely oppressive and destructive force for humanity. In yeah, I mean, all those people in them Scandinavian countries, even France, yeah, they're just, they're just being abused all over the fucking place practice. One of the main reasons that Marx was wrong about human nature is life and the world is not fair and we are not biologically or culturally or bioculturally speaking. <laughs> bioculturally? <laughs> you know, this is so stupid. Oh, so we're yeah, we're basically selfish organisms and we can't rise above it. Okay, because we can't grow a brain. Is that what you're saying? Our brain can't somehow control our nature. Bullshit. Okay, I mean, come on. We can become civilized. We can change our culture like that fast. Okay, so we don't need your your caveman. We don't. We really. We are above being cavemen. And maybe we should, if we went back to caveman, I think you'd probably be a big loser. Actually. I don't I don't think you're going to win that game either. All equal. Marx assumes we are. 
No, he doesn't assume we are. He says as a practical matter, um, he concedes there are people who have greater needs or people who have greater abilities. He doesn't say we're all equal. He just says let's maximize the potential of each human being. And you do that by distributing carrots in a rational manner, incentives in a rational manner. And, uh, you know, we can argue about, you know, how many carrots should be wasted on people that are dysfunctional and completely broken, but that's a whole other subject. I mean, I'm not going to say that I don't believe in the poetry of Marxism, uh, but the idea that workers are doing the work, <laughs> yeah, I get that part pretty easy. And Marx assumes a fairness and a destruction of a hierarchical system. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you, yeah, especially a hierarchical system just based on ownership, um, handed down. So you're born to the right parents, you own, somehow you're superior. And that's your fucktarded logic. The problem with this is it goes against our basic nature. This is not to say that political rights and even cultural rights and opportunities and, and the idea of equality and fairness in the political and cultural arena shouldn't be guaranteed. They most certainly should be and are. Uh, no, they aren't. Where? How are they guaranteed? How can you possibly have economic or social um, equality when you allow people to inherit vast fortunes? I mean, it's, no, it's not even close. How is that a guarantee of fairness? If I'm allowed to, to say, uh, acquire millions of dollars even, and then I can t send my kids to the best schools, I can give them the best opportunity, they don't have to hurt their, injure themselves at work, you know, making a living, instead they can go to school, they don't have to split their time between work and school, they can devote themselves to their education, I mean, I can give them all these little advantages, all these subtle advantages, and then when they get into the real world, I can, like a Donald Trump, give them ten million dollars or, you know, a few New York City properties and say, make your way in the world and compete against people who have nothing, nothing but um, debt to pay back. And, and then I'll say, oh yeah, you did a great job competing against those people who had no, you know, who, who were, you know, way back at the real starting line. Okay, the starting line, I cheated and put my kid in, in, in the front of that line. I mean, come on, you're just defending a broken race and then, and then having the the du duplicity and 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 just grotesqueness of sitting there and applauding the winners you have a fixed race you have you have muhammad ali boxing with a midget and then you applaud the fucker for winning the fight i mean ew that is such weasel behavior especially in our american system and in the west and it doesn't mean that we shouldn't strive towards societal and political fairness, we certainly should, economic as well. <laughs> yeah, but I bet you're not for one of those progressive policies that would lend us or, or lead us towards that more fair world. You just conceded we somehow can't create fairness. You, ju you just said we can't overcome our nature and what we are and what we were. And so how, why, why now are you saying we should, we should be doing something you say we can't do? <laughs> no, that doesn't make a lot of sense. Marx was correct in describing the problem of capitalism and state-level modern industrial society in the West and America. It is hierarchical, and at Marx's time, it was very oppressive and very inhumane. Marx sort of came of age in the mid to late 1800s. And guess what? The proportion, the amount of money locked in the hands of the elite, the, the um, uh, 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 aristos, uh, the five per top five percent or the top three percent is just, is proportionately the same as it was in Marx's day. Okay, we're living under monarchy. Okay, that, that you want to call it capitalism, that's fine, but it's not capitalism because there is no fair market. There's no free market. Um, we have all these rackets where we let corporations file bankruptcy and not pay their debt, and that debt ends up getting paid by the consumers. I mean, why, why you talk about this risk-taking, you capitalists? Where's the risk in having the um, consumers pick up the bill for your, your failures? So, so you allow your spawn, your disgusting little creepy spawn, to inherit the, the profits of your fake risk, and, uh, but they can't inherit the liabilities of your risk? Bullshit. And at that time, there was a whole lot of, there were just a whole lot of problems with 
the, the emerging new capitalism of Great Britain and America and parts of Europe. So Marx was correct in describing a lot of the problem and in describing a lot of the problem with the capitalism of his day that he saw, Marx was correct in describing the horrors of, of, of those days, of the factories and, and of the, the sort of caste system of the elites at the top and the poor at the bottom. Yeah, and we have the same system, you just don't have to even see them now because we have the caste system in China. Okay, we keep our, our poor, abused, ragged individuals way thousands of miles away so we don't have to see them bleed. We don't have to see them in the emergency room when they get killed at our, our unsafe factories. And we don't have to see their little fingers get whapped off and all the rest of the crap that's going to happen to them because they're over there and they're somebody else's problem. All right, but it's the same system. I mean, the fact that we've moved our little sweatshops and our child labor uh, malicious factories or, you know, across an ocean doesn't change anything in the reality. It just changes the perception that idiots like you have, that we're somehow more civilized because now we're only abusing people way over there. And there was no social mobility then. Things, however, changed. Marx never was never around to see the change. So Marxism is very outdated. One of the reasons <laughs> it's not outdated. There's this as for social mobility, uh, there's no social mobility if somebody if somebody with money decides to get into a business that you are in, your only mobility is going to be straight down the toilet. Okay, because it'll be the her scenario. If somebody can afford to lose a million dollars a year for a hundred years, guess what? You're going to have a hard time competing them with them in the short term. Okay, and if you have any debt at all, you can't afford not to make money one year or two years or three years in a row. You're going to go out of business, and that's the game we're playing now. It's still the same game. Money controls the game. This mobility you talk about is, as a practical statistical fact, is not non-existent. Marxism or neo-Marxism or cultural Marxism is very popular. It's because you can apply it to any group. The paradigm fits any group that feels like it's being oppressed. Racial, minority, sexual orientation, gender. Well, yeah, what do you, what, it, it doesn't even have anything to do with that. It just has to do with recognizing the simple reality, okay? The, the, fun of, the core of Marxism is the idea that value is created by workers, that capital does not sweat, that capital does not invent, that capital is just surplus, okay? And it's extracted surplus. It is taken from the value of a worker. It's called exploitation, butthead, and it's a worker just a little bit above slavery so there's slavery is down here exploitation is just a little bit above that but they have nothing to do with this word fairness and they have nothing to do with competition and all these other words you like to use that have nothing to do with modern capitalism the idea behind Marxism or cultural Marxism is really simple you have a pyramid At the top you have the dominant group which in America would be the white heterosexual American males. Then you have a sort of middle level of the socioeconomic hierarchical system, subdominant group, if you will. And then you have a bottom. <laughs> well, whatever. Right there, you you have a little diagram, you know, a little pyramid diagram. It doesn't make any sense because he has this dominant at the top and he has it all proportional. Now, the middle class is tiny, okay? The, the And then the amount of wealth held at the top of the pyramid is preposterous towards the mass of that end of the pyramid. And so then the poor and the middle class. So, so do the pyramid with the real world. Compare your two pyramids. Compare the people to the actual ownership. Okay, do those put those two compare those two pyramids, superimpose those two pyramids over each other, and you'll see what Marx was talking about. The ones at the bottom are being oppressed the most, according to the theory, and these would be the minorities. Now, no, uh, that would be the masses. That's what Marx talked about. The masses. Marx or neo-Marxists or cultural Marxists want to wipe out the hierarchy, wipe out the pyramid, so everyone's all equal and everything's all fair. And that's not even true. So, so why, why do you even talk about it? It's not. It's, it's about yes. I mean, human dignity-wise, human beings are equal. 
Um, but like I said, there's nobody arguing that all human beings are absolutely equal in both their need and their potential to be productive. I mean, no one's making that argument. So this is just a bunch of straw. That's all you're doing. You're arguing with your own little straw man that has nothing to do with uh, reality. It's just maligning and cheap rhetoric. Which is a wonderful utopian idea. The problem is, like I mentioned earlier, human beings don't organize that way. It's not part of their fundamental nature. Human <sighs> Look, human beings' fundamental nature became irrelevant hundreds of years ago. And it certainly can be irrelevant now. We create social policy and principles based on our rational ideals, okay? Um, you know, we, we've changed our games. We don't feed people to lions anymore. No, instead we play baseball and we try to have nice civilized rules and nobody gets to throw rocks at each other and all that kind of crap, all right? And that's what our culture and our civilization is trying to do. It is trying to progress. You want to keep it in some kind of stone age where whoever is born with the biggest club wins. And it's just plain bullshit. Human beings, just like wolves in the wolf pack, organize socially, biologically, culturally into a hierarchical system. So yeah, based on merit, okay? Not, now there's no little Hale Hilton sluts running around in the world wolf pack telling everybody else what to do, okay? It's, it's, it's hierarchy by merit, not hierarchy by um, bullshit. And as we know, might doesn't make right realistically, okay? The biggest wolf isn't necessarily the best wolf, so that's really not the best way to do it. So we, we try to think of better ways to create a system that... Um, and what, what's the point? We don't even really need a hierarchy. All we need is just, look, economics is about incentives, okay? That's all it's about. It's, it's about incentives to create productivity, all right? To do it in a humane manner, not to exploit deprivation, not to exploit excesses in a labor market, um, stupid circumstances that have absolutely nothing to do with the dignity of the human beings or the merit of their work, um, but just have to do with some ability to exploit a circumstance. And we're smart enough to know what exploitation is and to say, yes, exploitation is a word right above slavery. It's not a good word, all right? It's bullshit. The alpha male is uh, prized and it then rises. And then you have a beta male, or an alpha female, and a beta female. You see this all. Yeah, right. What you don't see all in nature is the ability to inherit that status, okay? That status has usually got to be earned, not inherited. All over in nature. This is the way we just tend to organize. Now, the reason that our capitalist system in America and in the West thrives is a yeah, the reason why it thrives, let's go through its history. How did it thrive? Well, first, it's thrived on slavery. All right, that's a practical fact. Okay, so the slaves cut down the trees, they made the ground fertile, they built the houses, they built the industry. Um, you know, so that's the, the, the first evil of the, of the premise of your argument. Okay, that's sort of an illegitimate productivity, wouldn't you agree? So we gleaned a huge amount of productivity out of human beings through illegitimate abuse. Okay, and then we imported a bunch of labor to build our railroads and our, our more modern factories. And then we had our sweatshops and our child labor. Um, on top of the fact that we stole a very rich, resource-rich um, land from the native population and basically exterminated them. Um, and, and so we exploited our oil resources and our industry, and we were the first one to the ball game, to the industrialization ball game. And there was huge advantage in being the first player. You know how that works in business. If sometimes you're the first one in, you've got a lock on a lot of things. And that's the way it's worked. And we're living off of legacies, a lot of bad legacies. All right. And so to sit there and applaud how wonderful our capitalist system is when it is built on blood is just cheap rhetoric. And especially considering now we see what our economy was made out of, at least for the last four decades, which was debt, okay? Debt that we can't pay back, all right? And that's going to blow this whole capitalist system to bits. Gigantic economic, political, and human success is because there is redress to address real problems, 
the system of redress. <laughs> yeah, you go to court someday, all right? Unless unless you're part of what, what there's no judge who's not one of the elite. There's no judge making less than a hundred and something thousand dollars a year. Okay, no judge who didn't make his living first by being a lying lawyer. I mean, come on. A system of redress? Get real. Whether well, that's, you know, taking my case to the Supreme Court or voting out the bums or marching on Washington civil rights marches or what have you. Is it uh, yeah, what have you, exactly. It's all what have you. There's no real redress in here. This system is just owned by the controlling parties, both of which suck. I will concede the Democratic Party is no answer to the problem, but it's a, certainly a brighter answer than Republican idiots like you. Press as well to help with the redress and their social mobility. You can go up, you have the opportunity in this model, in this system, to move up out of the... Yeah, well, it's no point. Here you got another one of these stupid diagrams. It's just made out of nothing. It's not made out of any real statistical proportions. You talk about this upward mobility. Uh, what's the real dynamic? How much of the money is still Rothschild or Kennedy or Getty or uh, Ford money? I mean, how much, you know, it's just in different hands now. Uh, you know, how much of this money really does go? How much of this movement of, of the classes up and down really takes place? All right, get the real numbers. Lower classes, or even the middle classes, and into the higher classes. Now, it goes both ways. You can also go downward, depending on your fate, your fortune, and in large part, depending on how hard you work and how smart you are and how successful you are. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, that doesn't work either, okay? Because even if you're moderately intelligent, you diversify, and once you diversify, you're, in you're immune to failure. Donald Trump's casinos went bankrupt. Um, did Donald Trump go bankrupt? No, because he, he, one business is separate from the other businesses. Okay, so it's, uh, you know, that's the way the system works. I mean, once you have the money, you've got to be a complete idiot to lose it. Social mobility is the key here. And it's one of the sort of rare, unique ingredients to the wild success of our Western... <laughs> you keep calling it wild success. I mean, it's it's obvious truth that the success was all credit card high living on debt it wasn't real growth in the economy it was debt growth okay it wasn't real success it was fake lifestyle built out of debt industrialized capitalist system some call that freedom you could just call that freedom too yeah, and you can just call it exploitation. It's just a great word for it. Yes, you go find a desperate population that'll work for a loaf of bread a day, and you exploit the hell out of them. Right, then you applaud yourself.